You know, one of the things I find so interesting about the Word of God is the fact that there are so many seed parables and plant parables and tree parables as you go through the Word of God, references to all this different type of stuff. And I think there's a reason for it, right? Because I think our growth is actually similar to how a tree grows, right? There's the parable that Jesus talks about if you have a faith of a mustard seed, right? And he talks about how it grows into one of the biggest trees in the whole garden. Boy, this is a horrible tree. All right, hold on. There we go. Does that kind of look like a tree? It, I don't know. That's a horrible tree. Bam, there you go. Now it's a tree. But one of the things that I think is interesting about this and a lot of people overlook in this type of statement or in these types of parables or even these types of references about how we are similar to this type of growth, there's this term, and I'm probably going to butcher it, I think it's called gravitropic, right? Something spelled similar to that, something like that. And pretty much it's the idea that before a tree can grow big and strong, it first has to take deep, deep root down into the ground. Right? And if you even take this back to the parable of all the different types of seeds that the farmer scatters, and you have the one person who receives the word with joy, and then unfortunately they begin to grow really fast, but the storms come, right? Hard times come, and they don't have deep root, so they get destroyed, right? And it's kind of the same type of thing. This gravitropic, I think I'm saying that right. I hope I am. It might be gravitropic. I'm, so forgive me if I'm saying the term wrong. This is the phase that has to happen first. And this is almost how I look at the opportunities of like a winter arc. I know that term's kind of corny, but like you're getting into that season where for the next few months, especially if you live in like America or Canada or something like that, it really is an opportunity to lock in on your business or your fitness or any area of life that you really drastically need to improve. And because there's not so much going on because it's cold outside, it's easy to lock in. Right. And I think this is the phase that a lot of people overlook. This is the phase that a lot of people have trouble tapping into because they don't understand the fact that in order for the tree to grow big, first, the roots have to take a deep foundation. And by the way, I never make my videos from like a superior kind of place. In fact, this video is almost like a frame of reference for me. This is almost like a message to me because most of the stuff is things that I'm going to be locking in on. Right. And so I'm about to list out four different things that I would really prioritize working on this winter arc, quote unquote, right? The things that I would stress you focus on so that you can make the biggest leaps, whether it's in business, spiritual growth, or Christ focus self improvement, anything, doesn't matter, right? Any area that we talk about in the King's Hall, any of it, doesn't matter. And the first one should be fairly obvious, but number one, semen retention. Go through the Old Testament, you can look at David, who was the man after God's own heart, Solomon, the wisest man in history, and Samson, the strongest man in history. They all fell because of one reason. What was it? Lust. It's the only sin, I believe, that the Bible says something along the lines of that is within our body, right? It corrupts our own body. I think it's the sin that would hold most people back. I think it's the sin that would cause you to lose an anointing. There's a bunch of different reasons for it. Right? I don't think there's anything that really will bring more guilt and shame to you either than a relapse. Right, And so one of the things I would really recommend for you is as things get difficult, count it all joy. Right, That's what James chapter 1 talks about. One of the pieces in that is the idea that when things are getting difficult, really that's just preparation. Right, And so if you look at it like this where you think about getting the godly feminine wife right, or you think about having the successful business or you think about just getting to a level spiritually, whatever it is, this is kind of the tree, right? And this is what everyone talks about in videos. This is what they sell you for their money courses, right? But in reality, your ability to sit through the refining fire of God and when you feel uncomfortable, or when you feel lonely, or honestly, you just have this rush of negative emotions and you learn to just kind of deal with it and sit with it and go to God and rely on God fully. That's the roots taking place so that you can make far, far more progress. And the way I look at it, man, that's just a cost to, there's like sayings for it, like the cost to be the boss. It's kind of like that, right? It's just, if you can learn to deal with this, you can learn to master this. Really, if you can learn to master this urge and you can learn to master the food that you put in your body, you're, you're almost guaranteed to be successful in whatever you want to be in because you're just going to have 1% level discipline. So I'd probably say that is number one. If you need help quitting, you need help getting on this and doing your first 60, 90, 120 days off, down in the description below, I'll leave a link to the King's Hall. I set you up with an accountability partner. I have weekly calls, weekly Bible studies. We probably had like 100 plus people do 30 plus days off for the first time in their life, which is awesome. So if you're interested in that, I'll leave it down in the description. But let's go to number two. Number two is something that I feel like most people probably wouldn't think of, but it's wisdom, right? When you actually read Proverbs, the thing that he really stresses more than 
money more than any type of riches or anything is wisdom. Because he says that the wisdom, if you can get the wisdom, everything else will follow it, right? This is kind of even one of the messages or things you could take away from Matthew 6, 3, right? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added onto you. It's kind of like the same thing, right? Because what's more wise than God? What level of wisdom could you get that's higher than the kingdom of God? Even when you think about this too, right? When you go back to the garden, before they sinned, before Adam and Eve sinned, they had a godly wisdom and they traded it for worldly wisdom. Because what does the serpent offer them, right? You will then know the knowledge of good and evil, right? He tempts them with knowledge to become more like God, right? But he doesn't tempt them with godly knowledge. He tempts them with worldly knowledge, right? So there's a difference. So maybe I should even preface this by saying godly wisdom, right? And you know what's the number one way I'd say to really step into that? Read more than you scroll, right? That's the simplest way. Read the word more than anything. Read books on financial growth, on anything that you want to improve in on Christ Focus Self-Improvement or in business, anything. Invest in mentors, do all that type of stuff because that's just going to take you to a new level faster. Seek wisdom and everything else shall be added onto you, right? Which you really do that by submitting to Christ and seeking God. The rest will be added onto you. So I'd say number two, wisdom. Seek godly wisdom. Number three, this should also be kind of obvious perhaps, but your income seek to increase your business or if you work a job seek to work overtime if you don't have a job because you're still in high school or something like that maybe you're a younger guy cool go get a job start grinding start stacking bread i promise you it's going to be worth it here's one of the things i want to preface this with too with income and especially for you guys that own a business if you're a little bit older you probably you're going to know exactly what i'm talking about this is the perfect time to try new stuff because I'm sure if you're in business, you know exactly what I'm talking about, where you have to work on a new project for weeks, sometimes maybe even months, and you can't see any fruits from it at all, right? It's honestly a little bit of a scary place to be where you're working on some new type of offer or design or something like that, and you don't know if it's going to work and you can't know until you finish it, right? And then until you send it out and see how it does. That's a nerve wracking spot to be, but the winter is the best time to do it. The season in which you're the most locked in is the best time to do it. So I want to encourage you, whether that's income, whether that's, I'll put it in parentheses, business or just overtime at your job. Part of being a godly masculine man, part of the reason we talk about Christ focused self-improvement and something that's biblical is being able to provide for the people that you love, right? Got any money for that? I don't, I don't know why. Some people are going to find that as like a unbiblical thing to say. It's not it's insanely biblical, but regardless. And see, before I even give you the fourth one, there's a key to all of this. All four of these things are going to create patience, right? And that's kind of the key in this too. Faith and patience work together. I'm going to go a little bit deep here, but I promise you it's going to make sense in just a second. So let me give you number four. Number four, fitness, right? Getting fit, whether it's a gym, go on a bulk, whatever, whatever. You know all about that stuff. I'm not going to speak too much on that because this is the first time in my life where I didn't injure my shoulder or my knee or something like that. So this is the first time I've even been able to do a proper lean bulk for longer than like six months, right? So I'm not going to speak too much on that because I don't know too much about that currently. But all of these things create what? Patience, right? They're building your patience. Faith and patience work together in tandem. You can't have one without the other, right? Because everything in the kingdom of God Everything that you receive from God comes from the spirit realm. Do you know what I mean by that? By the spirit realm? The, you have the spirit realm and you have the carnal realm. All I mean by the carnal realm is the seen realm, right? The things that you see with your carnal, like naked eye, right? And then you have things that are in the spiritual realm. These are the unseen things, right? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. Everything comes from the spiritual realm, right? If God provides you with healing, if God provides you with peace, if God provides you with joy, abundance in any area, it doesn't matter. It's going to come from the unseen realm first. Does that make sense? So you have the spirit realm. Spirit realm comes down into the carnal. God is outside of time. This is why God knows the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning. This is why God is the I am that I am that he talks about in Exodus 11. I think it's Exodus 11. It might be 15 where he talks about the idea. It might be Moses asking the question and he says, I am that I am because God was not just around back then. God will not just be around in the future when we die. God is always around. He's outside of time, right? So he is the I am that I am because he is always current. He is always with you. 
Here's why I'm telling you patience and faith go hand in hand, right? Because when you're meditating on the word and you're seeking deliverance from something, you're seeking getting to the next level, it's going to take time, right? Whether you're praying for help and guidance in your business, or maybe it's healing, or maybe it's joy, peace, getting out of depression, anything like that, it's gonna take a little bit of time right? That's pretty normal. A lot of people have this idea that healing, if God was going to heal me, it has to happen immediately. That's not, not necessarily true. And see, if you don't have the patience, then you won't continue to act in faith. What is acting in faith? Meditating the word day and night, Joshua 1, 9. Speaking the word over yourself, right? Because Proverbs 18, 21, the power of life and death are both in the tongue, right? Acting in a way that's doing, being a doer of the word, getting up and being consistent regardless of how you feel, right? All of these different types of things. If you don't have patience, right? You're not going to act in faith, right? But when you have patience, your mind gets girded up, right? You're able to be still and know, right? Be still and know that I am God. That's what he wrote. It takes you out of the mindset of needing instant gratification, right? That's what all of these things do. Look at them. This, right? The semen retention, de denying your flesh, all this stuff, that's not instant gratification. But I think you and I would both agree that no temporary little three-second gratification is going to be better than being able to meet the woman that God actually has planned out for your life, right? Or a good godly woman, anything like that, being able to step into your purpose, your anointing, all this different type of stuff, doesn't even come close, right? Wisdom, godly wisdom, takes time to develop that. A lot of people have this idea that when Solomon prayed his prayer and asked God to make him wise, that he just woke up the following day, bam, wisest man ever. No, the following years, he was in the books constantly. He was reading the word of God constantly, right? Constantly increasing his wisdom, right? Income, business. Anyone who's doing business can testify to this idea that sometimes you will work on stuff. I was just talking about it. You will work on stuff sometimes and you won't see results from it for weeks or months. And you have to have the faith and the patience to keep walking in that. Anyone who's in business knows exactly what I'm talking about. In fitness, the same way, you can do one workout. It doesn't matter how hard you go. You will not be looking, you know, shredded. You will not look like, uh, what's that one guy that played Superman? Henry Cavill. You will not look like Henry Cavill after one workout, right? All of these things are designed to get you away from instant gratification designed to create patience because patience and faith work in tandem. And if you can use patience and faith, then you can grow such deep roots, right? And you're such a strong, consistent, you show up for yourself every single day. You're such, you're a man who really does operate from the word. You're a man who knows the word front and back. You're a man who is the devil fears, right? Because of how godly he is, right? You really have submitted yourself to Christ. You need patience working with your faith to step into this. And then there's no telling how big that tree could get, right? There's no telling the type of man that you could become. There's no telling the things that you could accomplish. That's the process, right? That's what I, what I really want to stress here. Patience times faith is the key. So I hope you found this helpful. christ focus self-improvement is what I teach. Like I said, if you want to join the King's Hall, there's a bunch of different stuff down below. I just encourage you to go watch the video on it down in the description below. It'll tell you everything that's actually in it. But be blessed. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.